it's Steve from Survivor here with Nathan from Freelancer from Stuffs and we are in Orlando Florida in a hotel we're not at Star Wars Celebration but we're like near it we've been watching Star Wars Celebration we're like Don Cheadle in Ocean's Eleven that's the freshest of references <laughs> where there's a building exploding outside his apartment block but he's watching it on TV and we're <laughs> that's us <laughs> and we're tired and we're drunk yeah. and we have watched the last Jedi teaser trailer at least 49 times mostly because StarWars.com played yeah. it 47 times. We watched it an extra time just for fun. Uh, we thought we would break down the trailer with we our... We cracked it. With our brains. We've Da Vinci coded this motherfucker. Oh, so we're going to we're gonna hit play. Wait, are we allowed to swear? Yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to bleep it. Uh, we will play the trailer. We'll pause it. You might see some crap happening as I try to make the pause work with the video, but whatever. We're, it's going to be good. We're brains first video producers... Yeah, with a talent. Yeah, so uh, just, it'll, it'll be fun. Have fun. So we're, we're playing. We're playing now. Right now. There's lots of awkward stretches of, like, logos and black screens. There, it's, right now there's, like, a rock, I yeah, think. Yeah, we're looking at, like, it's like volcanic rock. Oh, oh a fist. Okay, I'm going to pause it. Yeah. So this is Ray. She looks perturbed. She does. Uh, upset. And I, I propose that she looks perturbed because she has just recently emerged from a cave that you can see in the background. Yes. And she's had, as I called it originally, an in-head thing Which happening. is a vision. Which, in, you know, normal lingo, Star Wars lingo, it's an in-head thing. If you recall in, was it uh, Empire? Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. People who go into caves don't tend to see very nice things. No, you see, like, Vader kill you. You see, perhaps, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going way ahead, you see maybe an iconic Jedi... Perhaps the last Jedi, he might be multiple last Jedi, uh, saying things that you wouldn't expect from a Luke Skywalker. Yeah, you see things that you fear. Hmm. And fearing that the last Jedi that you're hunting down doesn't actually want to be a Jedi. And doesn't want you to be a Jedi. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird because of what comes later in the trailer with the idea of that she's being trained. So why would he be training her if he's like, you know what, let's, let's not worry about this Jedi thing. He clearly cares. There are so many uh, like Rocky esque training montage scenes yeah. in this, so we'll we'll probably skip past a lot of them. We're gonna hit play again. Another black screen. Lucasfilm. It's unsurprising. Probably siren in the background. Yeah, up <laughs> eh, they'll deal with it. They're coming to get us because we've cracked it. Lucasfilm. Water. Octo. I this believe is, is the name of the. This island. is the planet that we know about yeah, already. From uh, Force Awakens. So there's nothing... Another black they're screen. They're not really showing off anything that's too fancy here, except Same for, thing. like, fancy go visit island yeah. screenshots. Looking at a... See, we don't care about that. Yeah. They made a big deal about She's it She's standing there. And I'm going to pause it now. And a black screen. Well done, <laughs> me. <laughs> we'll deal with it. Before that, I'll probably just fix it. Uh, she lifts some rocks. Man, with her With her powers. She's about to fly, you know? Or come... Just on the ground. The earth raises around him, and then he shoots off into the air. Or come back to life. Oh, you see, you hashtag see hashtag life. Ray did not die in the last movie, so she doesn't need to worry about that. But uh, no, she's alive. That's gonna happen. So it's training montage so far. Yeah. Nothing, nothing of note. Yeah, and she's not particularly impressive in terms of her power set. If all she's doing is raising pebbles. True. Right. Even Luke was kind of in Dagobah. He was raising uh, R two and, and X wing. No, no, that was Yoda. Oh, that was. He, he, he raised, tried. He tried he really R2 hard. And some boxes and stuff, and some stones, like much bigger stones than that little pebbles. Whilst doing a handstand. Whilst doing a handstand. Why no Yoda handstand? Yoda sitting on his feet. I'm pretty sure. So. Wow. Well, she's behind the curve. <laughs> hit pause it or hit play again. Some more black screen. What is? Wow. For Princess Leia. I'm gonna pause it again here. Uh, you know what? <laughs> She looks like the Bride of Frankenstein. I love Carrie Fisher. It, yeah. The tribute was horribly, horribly depressing because it was amazing and, and, and so yeah. emotive and meaningful, and I love her. But she has gray hair going up, like, from her temples yeah. up to her weird, like, beehive hair. She oh, looks yeah. like the Bride of Frankenstein. I'm going to ruin something for all you fans back home. If you watch The Force Awakens and see her final hairstyle, which is the point at which she shuns Chewie and refuses to hug him after they've both lost the people, the man that they love the most in their life. Um, she looks like Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> uh, once you have seen that, you, you can never unsee it. So you're welcome. Damn it. Oh, let's play again. Okay, right. pause. 
So there was in, some debate. Initially, you thought that was Darth Vader's helmet. Yeah, but it's not. I propose that is Kylo Ren's helmet because it's got the little silver bits, the chromy, the chromy like yeah. phasma bits yeah. in it. And also, I think Vader's helmet was already like half ash in like a pit, and this is definitely not yeah. that container. But what threw me was that they have the Darth Vader's breathing breathing sound happening while they show this shot, and I'm like, oh shit, that's Vader's helmet. You hear a little bit of a, you know, but. I think uh, on reappraisal, especially in freeze frame, that's clearly Kylo's helm. And he's gotten rid of it, which yes. is kind of good. Yes. He doesn't need it anymore. He does not. Smoky. Not Snoky. Smoky. Oh. Ah, smoky right? Ah. This, this, right here. Yeah, this was hard to see what the hell was going on initially because the spotlight actually distracts from. From what what we should be looking at, which is the the outer area, which is a giant tree. It's a gigantic tree. I don't know what I don't really understand what. I guess it doesn't have to technically there. be gigantic, but like it seems like the zoom in. You know, it looks like someone's built something inside of it, like they barricaded it off. Or it's right. Is, is it either macro or or micro? I can't tell. Like if it's like a really big tree or if it's like a, a bit of a. Tree and it seems something... like it's in a cave, right? And there's, they've they've made some light. They've they've disturbed something. There's a there's a pillar of light coming down on a ledge that is at a boarded up entrance. Like it's it's there's a whole lot of mystery around this. But like what I find most important is this is a teaser trailer. I hate that they call it a trailer. Mm. It's a teaser. Yeah. And they've chosen in the very limited shots that aren't black or logos or. You know, this December or whatever the hell they're doing. <laughs> this Christmas. Yeah, they have shown... Sweet Christmas. A shot of a tree, like, oh yeah, here's a shot of a tree. And that is, like, one of the most interesting and mysterious parts of the trailer. Like, that seems a weird thing to admit. Like, why are we focusing on a tree? And, we never deal in facts on anything I do. So, you are half knowledgeable in this, and I would like to hear your explanation as you told it to me. Mm. Uh, apparently, there's a tree thing with yeah. trees and things. So, canon, in, in the recent uh, canon, if you go read the Star Wars comics, there is a secret facility, I believe it's being run by the Emperor, and there's some mission to go and get stuff from it, and Luke breaks in, takes a few Force-sensitive trees. Sounds really weird. I don't know how it works. But he steals them, and I know that at least one of those trees, and I think there was two or three, one of them ends up with Poe Dameron's parents. And when they kind of retire from this life of fighting in the rebellion and want to have a kid, which is ultimately ironic because their kid ends up in the resistance, uh, well, um, uh. they go to a planet and they take one of the trees with them and they plant it at the end. So this whole notion of force sensitive trees has been introduced, but in the comics. And so you can't assume that anyone going to see the movie will have that. Will have read that. Yeah. So they're going to have to if if this force sensitive if this is a force sensitive tree. They're going to have to introduce that properly. But why not take it one step further? Maybe because we don't have that backstory, maybe this tree is the Jedi Temple, the first Jedi Temple. The original temple. one. Maybe they've, it, it became the temple or they built the temple around it, and yeah. that kind of solves those problems, right? But like either way, there's going to have to be explanation yeah. for what it is. Like if you can't but we just know, go, oh, that's the tree. But know, we like, know well, like the temple is a thing. So if, yeah. if you take this idea of the temple and build the tree around it, it kind of it it could work. Yeah, it could work. But who knows? We'll hit play. More tree. Uh, it's a glove. I don't care about that really. But that symbol is like the old Jedi it's Order so symbol. And there's some more training. Some like karate kid. Yeah. Canning. Christmas. This sweet it's Christmas. We don't want to say December. Okay, this, this is cool. cool. Let's pause it here. That's a good. That's a good pause. Okay, so this is. There's a lot going on in this shot. That's a great spot to pause it, man. And, and so we have, in in cent, uh, top center, we have a new ship that is kind of reminiscent of a B-Wing, but not really. It's not a B-Wing. It can't be. No. I think the thing that I'm finding weird is um, positioning where the pilot would be. Uh, immediately, you think center, but... It could be left. Because they've got, yeah, they've got a pot on the left, but they don't have a similar pot on the right, which would imply engine or, you know, weapons or something like that. Yeah. Could be on the left, and the center could be the pod. But what I find most interesting is they've got these these spikes on the bottom, like, that seem to be deliberately designed 
like almost for this planet. <laughs> in, ca- in case you ever needed to skim the surface of a planet and bring up red dust. Yeah. From, from a gray, like muddy, charred surface. But that's what, like, what I find interesting is that to me that doesn't even suggest that these are necessarily resistance things they're local like it's been local it's yeah. been co-opted it's been it's been borrowed or taken or, or there's a resistance that like people on the planet want to help the resistance because this seems very specific because i originally thought that the red smoke was coming out of the back of these things yeah but it's definitely like they definitely show that the shot of this one in center frame hitting the ground to show that when it bounces it actually kicks up red it dust. does that yeah yeah and if if these were they're not but if these were a b-wing maybe someone would luck on like they would happen to figure that out that this weird appendage of your craft could do this thing to the earth and and make it kick up red dust yeah. but they're all doing it yeah very coordinated like it seems like thing. this is yeah this is something that is it's it's known it's something that they do at the, it's a known tactic it's not just a, a happenstance but it happens. also makes it seem more like it's a civilian craft you know like that it's not weaponized yeah that it's being sent out to and there's not there's create. not a lot of weapons as far as you can tell sticking out of this craft like it's no. it's not it and doesn't look offensive little, it looks more a like a front on shot letter but yeah I, I i agree i think that they're being sent out to cover something that's coming from behind yeah um what's most interesting in the background is what appears to be ATATs. we're never going to say ad um but or, or atsts I think that there are smaller ATSTs if you really kind of squint. So do you mean the so if fifth, you're looking from the left, the fourth one from the left? Yeah, that looks like a two two legger, and the other ones look like four leggers. But only they only look like four leggers because they look bigger. Yeah, in relation to everything else that's going on in the scene, there are. But they're they're definitely the first order craft. There are rumors, fighting someone else. Yeah, well, there are rumors that those are a new type of. Uh, armored transport that we haven't seen ATQT. before. Something, something mm. bigger and uh, better, you would hope. So w- we will see. But let's go on. What do you say? So, th- though, so that scene, I don't have to pause it. I'm going to pause it just because I want to talk. Um, they almost looked like pod racers yeah. when they went to the profile view. Um, they're not, obviously, but th- I, I, that was so reminiscent of a pod racer to me, I couldn't I, I still can't shake that. I don't know why, if that was intentional or if that's just me kind of projecting onto the shot. But, but that actually would tie more into what I, like the theory that I suggested of them being civilian crafts that are indigenous. Yeah, to the local that kind aspect. Of, like maybe they are. Maybe they're races and they race across those those giant expanses of the salt flats or whatever you want to say it is. Yeah, that kind of barren wasteland, and that's how people keep track of them is by watching these craft zip along and they've got these this or you know this like spike that's kicking up red dust and dirt so that people can actually keep track of where people are in a race yeah. and also the people in front can kind of be mario kart like <laughs> throwing bananas out the back and then uh, distracting people behind them with uh, red smoke and the first order are the blue shells and the green shells and the lightning bolts yeah, and they're, everything they're else yeah so <laughs> we, in between all this we also had a shot of finn who was still in a coma I really feel like that shot needed to have him opening his eyes. Yeah. Like the the classic <gasps> moment. Because I don't think they were going to bring him out on stage at Star Wars Celebration and promote the fact that he's in the movie if he's just going to be <laughs> on a, in a coma in a back to tank and it's like, well, let's check him with Finn. Yep, he's still floating. He, like, he is not the Luke Skywalker of uh, Episode Eight. You would hope that he, wa- he, yeah, that he wakes up early on. But nice. I feel like if they just shown his, his eyes open or a twitch yep. or something, it would be like, okay, we know he's coming back. Yeah, cool. We can move on. Nice. And then we get to this scene, which is uh, Poe Dameron clearly running to his ship, not trying to get to it before it explodes. I think he was running to the ship while something exploded. As yeah, He wasn't expecting this explosion. So you said sabotage, and I tend to agree. Yeah, I think that... Um... They're, they're all kind of been scrambling to get to their ships. I mean, you can see other rebel pilots in the background as well moving to their ships um, because they're under attack. Yep. And they get to their ships and the ships explode, which suggests sabotage, which is interesting because we've already explored the idea of a First Order Stormtrooper having a change of heart and switching to the Resistance. So why not have some spies and planting the seeds of distrust and stuff to make that whole 
resistance element of the story a whole lot more interesting because I mean yep. ultimately we're going to see the last Jedi to see Luke Skywalker we're going to see what happens with Rey we want to see what happens with Kylo when they confront yep. both of them when Rey confronts to have a round two because she bested him the first time he's going to want revenge Luke's going to want to say what up bro you kind <laughs> I would of, like to uh, say anything at any time yeah, yeah. Hello. Well, well you kind of uh, destroyed my uh, Jedi order like so there's there's some scores to be settled in the in the force sensitive side of things but i would hate to think that they're just shoehorning in the resistance the shoehorning in layers story they're shoehorning in Poe's story i would like to think that it's more neatly tied in than that and the whole yeah. idea like if there's a mystery element around like who can we trust who don't we trust like we've got some traitors in the midst yeah because in my mind from the force awakens um the star killer base destroyed the new republic so there is no governing body Yep. The the uh, the whole galaxy is up for grabs again. Yeah, and the resistance. I don't feel from the you know the impression that I got about the size of their forces. If if we're to assume that we saw, not the extent, but like a taste of what they had. I feel like the first order, if they can afford to build a planet and turn it into a super weapon, is a lot better funded. And they're they're probably the easy like step in. Like hey guys, yes. New Republic's gone. We're here now. We're in charge. Well, who's, who's disputing us? Nobody. And then the resistance becomes the Rebel Alliance, basically. Oh, for sure. And and you alluded to it, but you didn't full out say it. And I'll, I'll happily do it. Um, we were introduced today to a new character, a, res, a resistance uh, mechanic. Rose. Rose. Yeah. And, you know, we're in a shot in a hangar or, you know, like a... Where a, mechanics hang a out. A facility where at least, say. you know, engines and, and vehicles exist. So it gives her ample opportunity to perhaps lay a trap or sabotage yep. something to cause this explosion and maybe she's not as good as she she's a very small dainty she was described as a disney cartoon come to life yep. that's almost the perfect character to be a traitor the opposite of what you expect and who knows like we're totally speculating at yeah. this point but it, it would be a cool twist it would certainly make her more interesting absolutely it's a new character it would give him a weight and it would make me under like i think as an audience member it would make me understand why they're uh, and this is if they do it, if they, they dedicate time to a new character as opposed to, well, like, guys, I'm already yep. interested in what's happening with Ray, whose story is different from what's happening with Finn. And then there's Luke, who's with Ray, but he's doing different stuff. And then there's Poe. And what's Leia up to over there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we've already got enough characters to track in a two, two hour, 20 minute movie. We don't need to introduce new ones unless they're adding something to the stakes. And it's a great parallel to Finn. This, this guy who was you know, basically, you know, conform, follow this doctrine, and he wanted freedom. She is someone who, you know, she sees too much chaos in this freedom. She wants yeah. something that's more structured. So she's working towards, you know, putting the First Order back in power. So there's this kind of overruling power Order. in the universe. And yeah, yeah this, it's not chaos. Yeah. Everything is defined. So what I want to, I, I mean, unless you want to add to it, last point I want to make about the specific scene that we've we've finished on is that all of these kind of starfighters in the background are exploding and while Poe's iconic black X-Wing gets caught up in a little bit of the explosion I don't actually buy into the fact that it properly explodes I know this Correct. is a sci-fi movie but if that explodes with the distance that he is to it he dead yep um, <laughs> BB-8 is not in happy shape nope. and as you know maybe they do kill them off in this movie I don't believe that would happen I would like to think it's more of a situation where everything around him gets destroyed and he's the sole one who has to go out, or there's a couple of stuff. He's knocked out for 10 minutes and has to eventually get Not back into that. the fight. Like, I want something. him to get knocked off his feet and then to jump up and realize he's the only one going up in an X-Wing. And we can't. We saw him prove in The Force Awakens that he was, like, the ace. You know, yep. He was the shit. He was the, the best starfighter that the galaxy has ever seen. I believe that that's what... Um, the actor whose name eludes me, Oscar Isaac, sorry, said yep. about his character when they asked him what he was like. And well, I want to see more of that. I want to see oh, him, him going toe to toe with like squadrons of Tie Fighters and him coming out on top. So when the, we'll play it in a second. When this when this explosion happens, it's clearly off in the background, and you can say that the explosion engulfs the X Wing, yeah. but it doesn't. But it, his, it, his, it, his doesn't explode. It doesn't include the X Wing, yeah. and it's meant it's a spacecraft. Yes, the 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 cockpit doors open so there might be some damage but i don't think i think it survives i, I think i think survive. that's safe to say we're gonna play it. and you can see 
They get engulfed. It comes down to... And there's, there's the falcon. It's There's uh, Ray. Well, that one was interesting. We'll pause here. Ooh, um, that's a good pause. Look at those eyes. They're so piercing. Um, the shot before was interesting because you have uh, Ray running, and, and I think they've deliberately uh, framed that shot in such a way as to hide what's behind her because I feel like, like the prequels, dare I say it, she's become this kind of like... Uh, general of old, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's an army being led by Jedi. So Luke would hopefully be somewhere off to the side, running out in front of another group. But they've got they've got Ray out front as well. Yeah, for me, it certainly wasn't on. I don't feel like it was on the same. It wasn't a training montage. It wasn't from the no. training planet because it, it, there wasn't water. It wasn't. It wasn't. It of, didn't have the same aesthetic. A lot of green, and it seems like from the amount of land and the cliffs that you can see in the background that we weren't on this small little island yeah like to me if i'm going to read into that shot and the background i'm going to say that that is where we had those shot uh the ships earlier with the the spikes that were kicking up the red dust yeah and i feel like that that shot earlier already suggested that there's going to be some big showdown happening on this planet and i think they're part of it yeah the jedi that is which would be awesome so now we're we're here at, at kylo who is helmetless he has the scar yep. from the last but movie what is that scar what is it's that pretty dainty tiny little like yeah i got in a fight once and uh you can see by my sweet scar he was slashed i don't even think he was slashed in that spot by the way i think he was slashed more across his nose i think so too and down across like it was giant yeah and so- he should have a giant burnt scar on his face to remind us that every time that that Ray or well, and him Ray beat him. Yeah. So I th- I think the, the the takeaways from this before we saw a helmet which might be Vader's might be Kylo's. I think it's Kylo's yeah. only because it frees him from having to wear the mask. And uh I what's his name? Driver. Someone Adam. Driver. Adam Driver, he is an emotive amazing actor. I think this frees him up to be able to actually express himself yeah. and and he, he did a great job in the first movie this lets him just kind of continue that on I, I don't think he needs the helmet anymore like the the helmet kind of hid the fact and not really but it kind of hid the fact of you know his parentage and and where he came from that's obviously in the open now he just gets to be a character this lets him emote like Ray can like Finn can yeah. like anyone else can the I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. Well, the the helmet, I think, was a deliberate decision to dehumanize him as well. Yeah. When you're seeing, like, when you first meet Kylo, it's you meet a helmet. You meet a you meet a a voice that is not his natural voice. It's, yeah. it's digitized and almost like, a cog of the First Order. Like, like, and you're looking at him. and You're going. He looks humanoid. He's being referred to by these other characters as maybe having had a past that was human. So they're kind of linking him to Vader, obviously. But but like, is he is he human? We don't know what he looks like under that. We know Adam Driver's playing the character, but yeah. do we get to see, you know? So it was it was a great introduction, but I think that like he's had a little tanty <laughs> and he's destroyed that helmet and he's decided he's gonna own he doesn't want to be Darth Vader anymore. He wants to be something else. Yeah. He wants to be bigger and better than that. Like he, he was kind of beholden yeah. to like I, this is my genetic destiny, you know, I've got this so in too. my blood. And now he's like, you know what? What if I'm not trying to be someone or live up to someone? What if I'm just being me? And still with the, the red... cross like, it, it, Non-perfect, very flawed, yeah. emotive. And I think that ties into the end of this teaser, like, in so many ways. So we'll keep going and kind of explain it there. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening here. So first we saw a an image of... Uh, like a burning structure. Luke Skywalker with R2-D2 and either... Like, it could be the first temple. I think that's more akin to... I, th- I think that's a flashback. I think this is a yeah. flashback. I think to, we're going to get to see more of that, the flashback from... Uh, the original movie, we saw a very brief flashback of uh, Luke putting his cool as fuck robotic hand on r2's head <laughs> to, to like to calm him down like it was like chill out r2 when and there was a kind of burning bodies in the background i think so it was like he had lost everything yeah i want to see more of that i want to see more of how that played out i think we're going to get to see that i think that's going to be crucial to something you touched on earlier yeah which is well before we were recording which is the <laughs> idea of um 
why has Luke gone into exile? Mm. Like, this seems to be a really weird Jedi tendency that we saw with Yoda in Revenge of the Sith. He has one round against Palpatine. He doesn't technically lose against Palpatine either, but then he just goes, oh, well, tried that on. Got to go yeah. into exile now. Like, but no, that- guy, you're the, <laughs> you are literally now the world's best hope to save the galaxy. Like, this hasn't started yet. You can kill this before. Slash, Not at the time, only out. hope. Because I'm as far as we knew... As far as we knew, he was, like, literally the only one that survived that order. As far as he knew, yeah. Yeah, and, well. and almost had Palpatine, but kind yeah. of... Like, eh. So, the, yeah, the thing that has, that has bugged me about The Force Awakens is that Luke was training these new Jedi, and Kylo Ren went ballistic, and he just kind of went... Uh, and he was my hands Kylo as well. Yeah, so, so it he, was his fault. It was directly his he fault. He failed, and he did. He didn't try to fix it. He wiped his hands of the matter and just left. Yeah. And I'm out, guys. So like, good luck, Galaxy. Star Wars <laughs> is all about this balance, and and the balance clearly shifted at that point. Like, I think it was probably overwhelmingly good at that point. So I guess he could have expected a, a swing back to to the dark side, kind of trying to even it out. Yeah. But like, you're a good guy. You don't just let the dark side increase like you you should fight that you should always fight that shouldn't you and and i think the problem is as well what they do with luke in this movie i think is the most important because we grew up with luke skywalker being the hero oh like the dew-eyed bright eyed big eyed there was no point during my childhood watching star wars that i thought that he was going to turn bad you know what i mean like if you but if you listen to interviews with uh, Mark Hamill and especially the sort of discussions that he was having with George Lucas about episodes 7, 8 and 9 way back in the day because the reason they put numbers on them was because George Lucas always intended to create 1, 2 and 3 and then he wanted to do 7, 8 and 9 I think at the very least yeah. I think it went up to 12 or something stupid but anyways Jesus. he definitely wanted to do 3 trilogies um, but the discussions were you know in, in Mark Hamill's mind he was like well I've got to turn bad like yeah. I've got to turn bad like you know, I kind he of needs had... to, and he followed. It's like the lineage at that point. Like he needs to become. Yeah, but that makes it so much more interesting as yeah. well. Like if Luke is actually bad or turns bad in this, then it's like this idea of like, can I change fate? Like, am I destined to always try to be the best Jedi, but end up being the worst bad guy? Yeah. Okay, let's let's keep playing. Well, that's Phasma. That's Phasma. Yeah, that's not that's not the Knights of Ren. No, which was what I thought originally. You thought as I well. thought too, but no, you're right. That that's Chrome. So Phasma's back, and that but, might have been part of the flashback, but yeah, it might be something different. And if like Phasma needs to come back for for that character to be hyped so hard in the mm. Force Awakens, and then get relegated to a trash compactor she was is terrible. Yeah. So yay, yay Phasma. Let's keep going. Uh, space battle. I don't okay. think there's much to say there. Yeah. They're protecting the planet that we think that Luke was on. Oh, that's interesting. And this is Luke in the same cave that we... We think it's the same cave that Ray was exiting. It looks to be the same cave. And that, that lends um, credence to our theory that, you know, as happened in Empire, Jedi in training goes into a cave, has some sort of weird experience, an out-of-body vision of yeah. sorts gets so their biggest screwed fear. up yeah and has to deal has with to that. Confront that and luke is either i feel like luke saying the jedi need to be ended is part of the vision yeah but it, it, it could it, it there's so many things that could happen from this and we had another theory that it's it's always about balance the light side and the dark side of the force and it's a constant ever changing ever shifting battle but Battles need to end at some point. If you want a, a resolution, you need to find a way to find, a re, you know, you need to re, you need resolve. You need to find a, a stalemate at the very least. I'm not speaking very well anymore, but you, you need to basically merge the light and the dark side and embrace both sides of the force. And that would mean that the Jedi end and the Sith end, or the light and the dark side end, and you are this weird hybrid that can embrace good and bad and yeah. find some sort of balance in yourself. And that's reflected in the canon as well. Um, if you go to certain, I guess they're a bit more obscure, Clone Wars episodes where ca- certain characters do encounter uh, depictions of the light and the dark. And more recently in Rebels, there's a particular character on a planet who is neutral. 
and refuses to be either light or dark and even goes out of his way to kind of punish the light side for for asking him to join a side and then punishes the dark side for going and starting shit as well but so yeah balance is is the key question but i think what's what's most important is that the last jedi needs to address some pretty big stuff like why luke removed himself from the board yeah we've heard people talking about it we haven't heard luke at all uh talk about why he did because like you said like it's a massive problem if he's created these massive galactic issues yeah because i mean kylo ren goes on to join the first order yeah helps the first order screw up a whole bunch of stuff build a star killer which destroys how many odd planets yeah and if there's one guy who's capable of fighting uh a, a dude who knows how to use the force and a lightsaber it's luke's it's the at the time the last jedi yeah who might not be the last jedi or only and jedi might be plural so yep. but like i just like that we need to have answers and i want to have them early i don't want him to be this cryptic stereotypical well, I'm, I'm gonna become the new yeah. yoda i'm gonna oh, talk to you in talk riddles. like this i do yeah for every question you have i will respond with a riddle like that totally worked for yoda but i don't think it. but that's because we as an audience were still learning how the jedi worked and we, like we that's not the case anymore like it's uh, there's still obviously things like force trees i guess that we yeah. are new to but like we we know how the jedi work and we learned how the jedi worked in luke so you can't like he can't just be this weird mysterious it, it he, i guess he could they could make him that but it wouldn't work to me like, i don't it, think it, it would feels work for worse yeah and exactly I, I think part of part of me actually doesn't want that final line of loops to be the um the cave even though i think it will be yeah they put it in there to be provocative they put it in there for the same reason that there's that iconic shot in the rogue one teaser where uh forrest whitaker's character says what will you become and there's that shot of i can't remember her name but the main lady in that like yep. looking up at the camera wearing her imperial outfit and you're like oh my god does she become bad and then years later you find out or a year later you find out that no that was never in the movie that yeah. shot like that was, was just probably a disguise good. I she guess. just we had the cameras rolling and she looked up and i thought that looked great and i thought they could use it in a teaser yeah but like that's what a teaser should do. It should get people discussing like we're doing. Yeah. It should be provocative. But it, part of me really hopes that that kind of saying, like Luke saying, we've got to end the Jedi, is not his way of saying, like, I'm out of everything. Like him saying the Jedi were flawed. Yeah. The Sith were bad. There's got to be a better way. Like it yeah. doesn't just have to be one or the we, other. We, let's the fight has new. to stop at some point. Yeah, let's forget about the Jedi order. But And the thing that bothers me the most, sorry to... In, oh, to cut you off is that I still question why General Leia just didn't embrace any part of her Jedi. Like she, she potentially was as powerful as as Luke. Yeah, they're they're bloody On twins. Paper she is. Like she, yeah. yeah, she should have exactly the same powers. And I understand that she decided to go towards the you know the the military side and become a general in this um, you know Not like she, what she has done is 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 well in itself but i don't see why she couldn't she was a, a strong independent female character as star wars likes to say right now and good and good for her but like why couldn't she have tried some jedi training in parallel with what she was doing if the jedi are so important to this balance and to you know keeping peace in the galaxy and you know fostering everything that's good you how can you turn your back from that calling especially when there's so little jedi left in the world yeah. The galaxy, I should say. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think that, like, for me, when, when you sit down and you think about what you hope for, when people say, hey, what do you want to see in episode eight? Like, one of my big things, well, I had a few big things. I wanted to see people <laughs> mourn Han's death, like, properly. At all? I wanted to see Luke's reaction to Han's death. And I wanted to mirror my own, which was crying um <laughs> and i i wanted to to hear about obviously the lineage of ray maybe the lineage of finn which hopefully isn't as convenient as it might be for ray um yeah and i wanted to hear about why luke we talked about earlier why luke removed himself from the board yeah but i also wanted leia and this is just pure fan like i want to see stuff i wanted to see leia hit a point where she realized 
my best service to the resistance is to go and become a Jedi. Like I have removed myself from the board. I have said, I don't want to be a Jedi. That's Luke's thing. I'm going to take care of what I do well, which is politics and bureaucracy. And I'm actually, yes, I'm force sensitive, but I don't want to do that. And I wanted her to hit a point at the end of episode eight, because they're saying it's darker than empire. Yeah. I wanted her to hit a point of despair to go, I'm going to go become a Jedi. But now, I mean, Carrie Fish is... And yeah, how dead, sad but... would it be if Rey somehow doesn't amount to anything that we expect her to be? Luke doesn't want to be a Jedi. And the idea was for Carrie, for Leia, for Carrie Fisher oh, as God. Leia, to step up and be that last Jedi. That would be just... That would kill me. And now that I've said that, I want to cry. Um, Except if the rumors are true that they've shot whatever scenes they needed to for nine... Which to me reeks of bullshit, but it's also yeah. technically possible because Ryan Johnson is writing, or has, sorry, has written both seven, oh sorry, eight and nine. Yeah. He's wrote the scripts for them. He's only directing eight, but he wrote the script for nine. That would be amazing if they pulled that rabbit out of the hat. But to me, that's like, yeah. like you would only do that if you're like you're, you knew your actor was dying of cancer yeah. or something. You well, know what I mean? Like that just reeks of morbid. Like shit, Luke, we've got to shoot your episode nine screens because you're kind of getting <laughs> old and you might die. Because you looked like you had trouble breathing in that. Right? Panel. Like that's that doesn't it's, seem and, right. And clearly, it's it's not a, it's not as much as we want it to be about Luke and Leia and Chewie. Like they, the last movie or Force Awakens was about seeding these younger new yeah. generation of characters like it's not yeah, like our guy. our favorites aren't going to be as involved as we want necessarily want them to although be although i hope luke is i well at least enough to balance out his lack in seven compared to han and leia yeah and chewy all right let's let's keep playing i think we're just up to star wars the last channel text and some words i think there's not much left i think that's it like just like 30 seconds of just full on December, December and things. You can't there you go. tickets yet. Don't worry about it's it. It's not yet rated. I love that they had to add December because they said this Christmas earlier. Like, if you just said this December, you wouldn't have to add December at the end. <laughs> right? Because this Christmas is also like holiday season. True. Holiday season in gaming terms. That's when the Project Scorpio comes out. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh-huh. like holiday releases start from August. October. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. You go you're going way early, which is true. Now. But like mid August is like that's when the holiday releases start and they used to end in October, but now that's stretched to November and just to Ubisoft Christmas. it stretches to December there you these go. days. I like that you tied this all back into video games. Well you're done. Welcome, yeah. Uh so we we're we're actually done. here to see Star Wars Star Wars Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront two. Uh, we have no idea what to expect yet. It's we, coming. We have partial ideas. But we'll have some ideas, we obviously, the in, in, the, in the coming days. We saw the 30 All trailer. eras. What? All eras. All eras. Oh. All er- Not all think, errors. Think... All eras. Yeah. With words and enunciation. Yes. Uh, Nate, anything left to say about anything? No, Star Wars? I'm, I'm excited. I hate teaser trailers. Because but I'm excited. I'm I'm actually kind of more excited about that poster than I was about the, the trailer itself. Yes, the it was, was smack. Luke looks angry. In that Luke's poster. angry. Kylo is like half as big as yeah. as uh, Luke, and you can't see his mouth. And I think a lot of Luke's anger is in his mouth. But his eye, yeah, he looks he looks pissed. And you were saying before that Luke looks really angry, and Kylo doesn't look angry. Like, is this? Kylo just are we like seeing color. a shift of yeah. these characters into be, their opposites, or, or a shift in the way that we see and perceive what is what is good and what is bad, mm. or what is dark and what is light? Which is lends bad. credence to the idea that maybe you know the end goal is to try to you know fix air quotes the balance by letting go of these ideas of good and light and kind of embracing everything yeah, and one and side being has a to whole. destroy another and yeah yeah mm, well there it's you go very kind of matrix ending please tell us what you think if we're completely off the mark or if we're like the smartest people ever if you want to give us a job writing the next you know the episode nine doing some rewrites we'd happily do that <laughs> it's fine we'd settle for writing a video game script or uh the Force Anything? Unleashed. Really? Force Unleashed 3. Yeah. We'll take oh, that. yeah. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's yeah. Right, so oh, yeah. yeah. Don't try. No, that'd be great. <laughs> and we're done. We're um, done. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever YouTube says to up, do. Up, vote, down, down, yeah. vote. Where can we see your stuff as right, normal? Just don't go looking for me. K-Zone. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay, we're done. Bye. Goodbye.